class <laughs> actually is going to be very basic, very basic class, very rudimentary. Uh, and the reason I'm going basic is because I saw a video with uh, one of the younger camps, and they were kind of, uh, you know, fumbling over basic things. So today we're going to discuss, um, what's the name of the class? What's the name of the class? Black people must leave the Christian church. Oh, and we got uh, Canada. Oh, sisters, how y'all doing? I'm sorry. How y'all doing? Brothers, how y'all doing? I apologize. And brothers and sisters online, we got Canada. And I want y'all to know, whoever that is the hot seat right there. Anything goes wrong, we blast that section. So I see Noah got frightened. He don't even want to go there no more. <laughs> Abiel gave up the ghost. He gave it. He don't, I'm not going over there. So now it is Canada's time. Uh, what's your name, brother? What? Soldier what? Josedek? I don't care what your name is, Canada. Your name is just Canada. <laughs> we who are about to die. So that is the seat right there. You know, there was a, there's, a, there's a Negro who's going around. He don't go out to teach. He goes calling all of our IUIC camps mad about the Mexicans. Mad about, I don't know how many of y'all here Mexican, but I know in AZ we got a lot of Iskar. A lot of, you know, other camps, we got Issachar in there. But they mad. You got black men. I'm going to tell you why they mad about the Mexicans. There's two reasons. It ain't the, the, the ones that got a problem with the Mexicans, Issachar, either A, they come from California, and they was in jail, prison system, got beat up in the prison system by the gangs. It's always that. You got to pull the curtain back. What do they have against the Mexicans? Oh, they're not our people. Pull the curtain back, they got beat down by the Mexican. That's what happened. Because you know in Cali, there's a different breed of Issachar out there. It ain't like the New York Mexicans. You ever see these New York Mexicans? Mita, Mita. They real little. I don't know. They got, they're like clad groups. Abiel was trying to school me on us on that. Like amongst the Latinos, they got different classes of Latinos. Those that breeded with the black slaves that came. Those that breeded with the white man. They are those that breed with the Asians, them, them little, little ones. Now, I'm not saying that they are not Israel, because a lot of them are Israel, okay? But I'm saying, the one, like, you go out to Cali, you're not going to pick on the Mexicans out there like you pick on the ones in New York. The ones in New York, you be pushing around, move, move. Yeah. You ain't doing that in California. You're going to get, get hot brass. They'll put a tattoo on for your face. Your, you know the last three-letter word. So, it's always that. They probably got to beat down. Because uh, when I went to Cali, I said, I don't want to see Issachar. So I go out. Now, I'm not short. I see Issachar. I'm like this. Hey, how, how you doing? <laughs> that's a big one right there. You know, that's funny. But uh, if y'all didn't get a chance, uh, I want Officer Jonah. I want, is it Soldier Jonah or Officer Jonah? Officer Jonah. I want, if y'all get a chance, I want y'all to get this book. Now, you got a lot of the wide nose, big lip Negroes who are upset about the Mexicans. So in this book entitled Origins of the American Indies, I want all you Negroes online to get angry with this book now. Joe, and I want you to open up the page 88, and I want, and, I, and we're just going to read what it says. I'm not even going to go to scripture to verify a point, which we've done many times. I want you to zoom in, cameraman, on the highlighted part. I'm going to read it. It reads, the Mexicans are originally of the ten tribes captured by Salmanazar and of the family of Issachar, whom the Indians recognize as their special ancestor. Now, get a lord of hand. Get hey, a lord hey, of hey. hand for that thing. Get mad, Negro. You can get mad if you want. And, and, and what you want to hurt. this was, these are concepts that came through from between 1492 and, look at it. Zoom in, see the second subtitle? European Concepts, 1492 to 1729. These were concepts that the Spanish put together through observation when they sent their Jesuit priests follow, who, and the conquistadors followed behind them. But they knew that that was Issachar mm. down there. So you know what this means? This is similar to the uh, to the information that's recorded in that book, Lost Tribes in the Promised Land. Yes. 
where they tell you that it's, uh, uh, passages from southern uh, passages of southern explorers of, of explorers of the southern United States, and they give the dates, mm -hmm. meaning that that book is a compilation of records. Right. Exactly. And that's what this is saying. The same thing. European cons saying the so exact same thing. And. Ariel brought out to, uh, th these books we discovered later, right, exactly. way after exactly. Priest Ariel had exactly came exactly. with the breakdown. We was like, oh shoot! Right. So exactly what he was talking exactly. about. Exactly, exactly. See, we're not we're not stupid. We're not going to allow a simple Negro and his antics to make us believe that what we've learned is garbage. Exactly. The hell with you and the hell with your thoughts. We're going to deal with what the Most High said, and we're going to deal with what this Bible said. You can drop dead and suck wind. <laughs> So now, so we, we, we see we're helping out, we helping you out, Northern Kingdom. See, we uh, why is Northern Kingdom all feeble and weak? Come on, Northern, y'all better step y'all game up. Step your game up, brothers. Yeah. All your major classes this week, good. Judah always got to come to the rescue, but that's all right. We got your back, we got your back. And you brothers that, that, that these Negroes be calling, just hang, I'd hang up on them. We're gonna open up today's lesson regarding black people must leave the Christian church. Uh, I want to open up um, today's lesson. I'm going to go through several articles and videos. So y'all bear with me because the scriptures I'm going to pull out are going to be very basic. Uh, Canada, give me the first article called Blacks Leaving White Churches, please. The black, that Texas perspectives that blacks are leaving white churches should surprise nobody. Here is what to do about it. In America, it is easy to forget at a political moment when black evangelicals leaving white controlled churches is headline news. Notice what it says, white controlled churches. All these black churches are white controlled, when you really think about it, all of them. Go ahead. Black evangelicals leaving white controlled churches is headline news. It is important to remember this. In fact, it has happened before over and over again. It is more than a political moment. It is a historical pattern. This matters because the majority of white Christians still believe their churches are open to non-whites. Yet as black members leave once again, it is obvious that many feel otherwise. You see that? They say, see, white people are always in a state of denial. Our churches are open to all races and creeds. But then when the black people get in there, you, fe you feel a, a sense of uneasiness that we're not welcome here. You look at all the images in the white church, you see images of Caesar Bourget as Jesus, the white angels, white Moses. Everybody's the Edomite in the church. And you get a sense of uneasiness and uncomfortability. Read. If this pattern is ever going to change, white churches have to acknowledge racial history. That is something white folks will never do. To acknowledge racial history, you must acknowledge the victim and the criminal. Who is the victim in your racial history concept? Black people. Latino people, Native Indians. Who's the criminal? White folks. They don't want to acknowledge they are the criminals. They have to understand why blacks have left white churches and why they continue to do so. For example, Richard Allen, a freed slave, attended St. George Methodist Church in Philadelphia from 1786 to 1792. He would have stayed longer, but white members wouldn't let him. During the middle of a service, they dragged Allen and fellow Methodist preacher Absalom Jones, also a former slave, from the whites only seating to the back of the church. Get in the back, Jack. Go ahead. Unwelcome as an equal member. Unwelcome as an equal member. Wow. Go ahead. Allen left the white controlled church. He then founded an independent black Methodist congregation. And Wait, stop. You see that? He then founded an independent. That's how the majority of these black churches got started. Because white folks was kicking them out. Would mm -hmm. not allow them to worship with you. And white black people said, but we, we serve your God as you do. They said, no, you don't serve our God. Our God is the devil. <laughs> In case you didn't know. Go ahead. He then founded an independent black Methodist congregation and later worked to organize the African Methodist Episcopal Church, an influential Protestant denomination. In other words, Allen was a Methodist, and he became a black Methodist only because whites forced him to do so. In the 1830s, after two major efforts by slaves to gain their freedom, a plot by Denmark Vesey and an uprising led by Nat Turner. Now, you know what happened to the plot by
by Denmark Vesey got foiled by a Negro coon named Jay the Producer. <laughs> <laughs> this Negro ran to the white man and spoiled the plot of Denmark Vesey to overthrow the slave masters. Denmark Vesey had a whole huge slave rebellion about to go down. Sometimes we make the mistake and trust a Negro. You can't, just because he looked like us, don't mean you could trust him. Undercover brother. <laughs> exactly. He might be black on the right, outside, but he's go. very white on the inside. Very red, I should say, on the inside. And y'all know what happened in that turn. How many of y'all saw Birth of a Nation? Raise your hand. Wait, let me do it this way. How many of you did not see Birth of a Nation? Raise your hand. Okay, you four need to be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> R buy the movie. It's an excellent movie. Or movie night. Are you going to play the movie night? One Black night. Panthers first and uh, Birth of a Nation. Okay. So we're going to show it to y'all on movie night. Okay. All praise. Uh, where we at, Officer Leon? F for three decades, from the 1830s to the 18... Sorry, no, excuse me. In the 1830s, after two major efforts by slaves to gain their freedom, a plot by Denmark Vesey in an uprising led by Nat Turner... Whites force blacks to worship in their churches. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. First, they That's was heavy. kicking us out. Right. Then when they saw the rebellions, they said it says whites forced blacks to worship in their churches. They forced us to worship with them after those rebellions was about to go down. Let's see why. Go ahead. Whites forced blacks to worship in their churches and required any black religious gathering to be supervised by a white minister. Our congregations had to be supervised by a white minister. Wow. Go ahead. Whites were afraid of losing control and afraid that independent black religious gatherings were a place where slaves could organize and challenge that control. They were afraid of losing. Where's that part at? Whites were afraid of losing control. Losing control of what? Huh? Somebody just said it. That's the exact word I'm looking for. Losing control of the black man's mind. Because that's what independence will do. It'll cause you to start organizing among your own selves and start thinking of ways to make things happen for you. Independent of him, he said, we can't have that. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a basic scripture. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, 48. Watch. I'm going to show you the fear of us losing our, them losing our minds. Deuteronomy. The now, this is a very basic scripture, but let me show you. Go ahead. Chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. Stop. And in want of all things. Who can help me out here? In want and in want of all things. Yes, young brother right here. And in want of all things. Let's see. See what you got. Um, that goes into uh, Shalom, Shalom leadership. What's your name? Officer Jehoshakai. Officer Jehoshadai? Jehoshakai. Jehoshakai. Yes, sir. Okay. Rochester. Um, so uh, one Don't of all things. Don't look like Nehemiah a little bit? <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But go ahead. Um, birth certificate, death certificate, marriage license, driver's license. See, I thought you had it, Officer Jehoshakai. Oh, yeah, You're not staying on track with today's lesson. You went somewhere else. Can somebody help us? The wheels came off the train. Give that brother right there. Dang, he's talking to the end of the mic. <laughs> Uh, shalom leadership. Uh, brother Yeramia. Brother what? Yeramia. Yeramia? Yeramia. Yeramia. Okay. That's Jeremiah. But it, he put the Y there for Jeremiah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. It, it goes into religion. What do you mean? It goes into um, in the want of all thing, meaning we want you to come to us for even, even for religion. Right. If you want to learn about God and Christ, you must go to your enemy. Read that again, Officer Leon. Thank you. And he, excuse me, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So that includes religion. If you want to learn about God, you must go to your enemies who never treated us right. And if they don't treat us right, they won't teach us right. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy and neck. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Go ahead. Until. Until the yokes came off. When? We have destroyed thee. Until we have been destroyed. Meaning destroyed mentally, spiritually. So now with the racial uprisings, the slaves organize it. They said, we, we don't want to lose control of their minds. Bring them back to us. We took the yokes off too early, Chuck. 
Yeah, Bob, we took the yokes off too early. Right. The program hasn't set in yet. It hasn't the set in. You got Denmark Vesey. <laughs> right. You got that Nat Turner fella. You got many other fellas out there rising up. Mm. Bring them back to the church. Bring them back. So read that again, Officer Leon. Back to the uh, article. For three decades, from the 1830s to the 1860s, evangelical churches in the South were technically interracial, but by no means integrated or inclusive. Mm. So although they were racially, they were interracial, but by no means integrated or inclusive. Mm. Y'all understand what they're saying? Th th you could be there amongst them, but you're in the back with no say-so, no control about nothing. It's just like when black people say we're integrated in society. Right. No, we're not integrated. You might be in interracial with society, but true integration means that you're integrated economically as well. Meaning if, they, if we work for them and they acquired, just for a number, let's say they made $500 million. Now I'm joined with you. You are supposed to share the wealth with me. That's true integration, but that's not what they're doing. You know what? Uh, Bishop, people don't know the meaning of words. Well, you're talking about integrating with something. You cannot integrate and there still be a superior class. Right. That's not integration. That's called assimilation. Right. You've, right. Been, you've been absorbed into somebody else's culture and into their thinking and so forth. So it's, that's technically inter interracial is BS. It's, a, it's rec actually an oxymoron that what we're reading there. And they're saying you're interracial, but at the same time, you're not integrated or you're not included. So what kind of integration are they talking about? Master slave. That's what they're talking about. That's it. Read on. After the Civil War, African Americans left those churches for their own independent congregations, free from white control. And, but you know what the, the mistake many of our ancestors did? They took what they learned from white society, from Edomite society and culture, and just brought it in to the black church, still worshiping white Jesus, white angels, Santa Claus, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, right. Easter Rabbits and Bunny Eggs. Right. Same thing. Go ahead. Today, when pluralism and multiculturalism... Now, multiculturalism, what they teach in the school system, mm -hmm. having a multicultural... Uh, Curriculum. Go ahead. ...are self-processed, self-professed progressive values. And Sunday is still the most segregated day of the week. So, so you're supposed to be integrated. Right. Why is Sunday still... Segregated. Right there, right there. Right there, that second paragraph that we're looking at. Go ahead. Sunday is still the most segregated day of the week. We should recognize the sociological fact and historical reality that whites will support inclusive practices so long as they feel in charge. You see that? White people will only accept you if they, feel in they must feel in charge. That's exactly what we were saying earlier. So this is the concept of the black church today, but go ahead. This is true of interracial churches, as it is true of American society. To be surprised when blacks leave white evangelical churches is to forget how patterns of racial inequality persist, not despite religious civility and good intentions, but because of them. What happened to Richard Allen at St. George's Methodist Church in 1792 may not happen anymore in evangelical churches. Wait, it may not happen. But it does happen. It's called Dylan Roof. <laughs> and I'm going to show you it's still happening, but go ahead. But it happens all too often outside the church as a disproportionate number of African Americans are forcibly removed from communities, families, homes, and workplaces, denied political and legal representation, and placed at the edge of society in prisons, shelters, and on the streets and stretches that white churches are reconciled with, the, with that reality should surprise only those who forget that this has happened before. So when we're on the street and bring this out, you know black people are shocked at what we're saying. What is wrong with y'all saying it? You're filled with hate. No, we're filled with facts and reality. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before.
IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.